Michael E. DeBakey single-handedly raised the standard of medical care, teaching and research around the world. He was the greatest surgeon of the 20th century, and physicians everywhere are indebted to him for his contributions to medicine, described cardiovascular surgeon George Noon. Millions of lives have been saved because of the leadership and legacy of Dr. DeBakey. Michael Ellis DeBakey was born September 7, 1908, in Lake Charles, Louisiana, to Lebanese immigrants. I was born of, a, of parents that gave me a, an exceptional upbringing, particularly in, in so-called Judeo-Christian values. My grandparents and my parents uh, immigrated to this country uh, from Lebanon. My parents were very, very insistent upon education and very also insists upon discipline. So I had from my mother's side the value of compassion because she was a very compassionate person. And on my father's side, very, very uh, strict discipline. DeBakey earned his Bachelor of Science medical degree and Master's of Science degree all from Tulane University in New Orleans, Louisiana. While DeBakey was still a student at Tulane, he made medical history when he invented the continuous flow roller pump that propelled fluid through a flexible tube. This pump, almost 20 years later, became the main component of the heart-lung machine and for the first time in cardiovascular medicine made an open heart surgery a possibility. The DeBakey roller pump is still used today. In 1942, DeBakey enlisted in the Army and was assigned to the Surgical Consultants Division of the U.S. Surgeon General's Office. DeBakey went to Europe where he cared for wounded soldiers and visited field hospitals. While there, DeBakey realized that many soldiers were dying because there was no medical treatment close to the front line. Under his leadership, the first mobile Army surgical hospitals known as MASH units were created. DeBakey's legacy lives on in these units. They have saved thousands of lives in the wars that have followed. While in the Army working for the Surgeon General, DeBakey spent a lot of time reading, researching, and writing. He realized that the Surgeon General's National Library of Medicine should be taken out of Army's control. With DeBakey's leadership, Congress passed a bill allowing the library to be moved. Today, the National Library of Medicine is the world's largest biomedical library and the developer of electronic information services that deliver data to millions of users every day. It plays an important role in translating biomedical research into practice. Following his time in the military, DeBakey proposed medical centers be set up around the U.S. to treat wounded soldiers when they return from war. This idea led to the development of the Veterans Affairs Medical Center system, which allowed for a larger amount of veterans to get the care they needed. In 1948, DeBakey accepted the position of chairman of the Department of Surgery at Baylor College of Medicine in the newly formed Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. When he first came to Baylor College of Medicine, it had no full-time faculty and no teaching hospital. With DeBakey's leadership, this quickly changed. He started the college's first surgical residency program and created, for the first time, affiliations with local hospitals. This program has continued to train some of the world's greatest physicians. As a professor, DeBakey himself has trained hundreds of heart surgeons. DeBakey thought that teaching was his greatest accomplishment. I must uh, really admit that probably it's, uh, it's the people I train because that lives on. Uh, whatever technical or scientific knowledge you may have uh, provided often is surpassed by new knowledge. But real values in medicine um, live only by being handed down to others. Dr. Michael E. DeBakey was a leader and pioneer in cardiovascular surgical procedures. This is obvious through the countless procedures he researched, created, and successfully performed. During the 1950s, DeBakey performed many new heart procedures. He was the first to successfully remove a blockage in the artery. 
He then followed with the first successful resection and graft replacement of an aneurysm in the downward section of the aortic arch. The graft was made from Dacron that DeBakey himself bought at a local department store. On his wife's sewing machine, he actually configured a Dacron tube graft and configured it in such a way that it had a large portion to sew to the large artery to replace the disease abdominal aorta. Probably more than anything else Dr. DeBakey did, the development of that artificial artery, now called a Dacron graft, uh, is uh, the most famous operation or invention that he created that's used around the world. DeBakey performed the first successful quaternary bypass in 1964. This was huge for cardiovascular medicine. Surgeons everywhere could give new hope to the patients that just months before would have died from heart disease. Today, in just the U.S. alone, more than 500,000 quaternary bypass are performed each year. DeBakey had dreamed of placing an artificial heart in a human for years. He was able to get federal grant money for the first time to fund research on an artificial heart. Bruce Sorrell, chief science editor at Baylor College of Medicine, said, DeBakey got people to dream that they could replace a heart, not just fix one. DeBakey set out to research and design a device that could help patients heart pump while recovering from surgery or waiting on a transplant. Several years later, the left ventricular assist device was successfully implanted into a 37-year-old woman. Years later, working with NASA engineers, DeBakey and colleagues developed the DeBakey VAD for a child. Many famous and wealthy people around the world sought DeBakey to fix their hearts. In 1964, the Duke of Windsor came to Houston to seek help from Dr. DeBakey. DeBakey also operated on Jerry Lewis, Shaw of Iran, and Marlene Dietrich. In 1996, Dr. DeBakey went to give a prognosis to the president of Russia, Boris Yeltsin. Yeltsin said that DeBakey was a man with an almost magical capacity to cure people. DeBakey didn't just perform his operation on well-known people. He operated on the rich and poor alike. He treated poor patients with no source of funds with the same attention and respect that he gave to the heads of state. Dr. Michael D. Bakey, over the course of his lifetime, received numerous awards, medals, and honors. Perhaps the greatest award was awarded to him just a few months before he passed away. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, one of the highest civilian awards in the United States. At the medal ceremony, President George Bush described Dr. DeBakey's greatest legacy. Dr. DeBakey has an impressive resume, but his truest legacy is not inscribed on a medal or etched into stone. It is written on the human heart. His legacy is the unlost hours with family and friends who are still with us because of his healing touch. His legacy is grandparents who live to see their grandchildren. His legacy is holding the fragile and sacred gift of human life in his hands and returning it unbroken. Dr. DeBakey passed away at Houston Methodist Hospital July 11, 2008. The world is a better place because of Michael E. DeBakey. Many consider Michael E. DeBakey to be the greatest surgeon ever. DeBakey's surgical career lasted more than 70 years. He performed over 60,000 heart surgeries. Because of Dr. DeBakey's leadership, he changed not only the world of cardiovascular medicine, but also the lives of millions of people around the world. Under Dr. DeBakey's leadership, Baylor College of Medicine became one of the world's greatest medical institutions. The Texas Medical Center is now the largest in the world because of DeBakey's influence. Dr. DeBakey's leadership as an educator, medical statesman, and surgeon left a legacy not only here in America, but around the world. His legacy lives on in the doctors he taught and worked with, the procedures he began, the devices he created, and in the lives he has saved. For this, I am grateful for you see, I was born with three heart defects. I have had surgery to repair my aorta and I will need an aortic valve replacement. I also am in danger of suffering an aortic dissection. Without DeBakey's research and innovating procedures, I might not be here today. I am thankful for the leadership DeBakey showed in cardiovascular medicine and the legacy he left. Because of Michael E. DeBakey, my broken heart and others will continue to be healed.